sleep and that world you why is this such a big deal? Why is it a big deal to you? Everyone, like, why? Why are billions of people mm -hmm. hitting you up on Facebook yeah. and Twitter on all sides of the spectrum? Yeah. Why is the Supreme Court ruling on this? Why are, uh, why are people just? You understand this? Why yeah. is this a thing in our society now? I know well, it's a broad question, yeah. but if no, if it, it is. If it just sits on the plane of sin with all yeah. other sin, and it's something that mm -hmm. we struggle with, but we follow Christ, and that's the main thing, and we're saints, sure. you know, if we're yeah. What's What's the deal? Yeah. Why are we having this? Well, I don't think I can fully answer that because I'm not God. And I mean, don't think I haven't thought of this for, I mean, yeah. it is, there are things that I lay down at night and, you know, even as, as the weird, emotional, deep, complex kid that I was, mm -hmm. you know, I can remember just laying on the couch on Saturday mornings, feeling sick to my stomach, trying to figure out mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. trying to figure out eternity, trying to figure out all these, these things. And I still do that. You know, I'll wake mm -hmm. up in the middle of the night going, ah, I don't get this. I, I look at the issue of, of homosexuality and marriage and all of those things, sexuality in general, and I look at them through the lens of image bearing. Mm. Um, and I, I think that we are all image bearers. Mm. Whether we know him or not, we were created to be image bearers. We can't look at any human being walking down the street, whether mm -hmm. they're gay, straight, black, white, um, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, Christian, mm -hmm. atheist, whatever. Yeah. and not see some part of the image of God. And I, th I think the whole issue of marriage and sexuality, mm -hmm. it is an expression of who God is because mm -hmm. it is an expression of male-female. It is an expression mm -hmm. of, of, of complementarity. It is an expression of, of gender. God created us in his image, male and female, mm -hmm. different expressions. And, and for me, the way I, I live my life and the way I interpret scripture and creative intent is... The, the only way we can fully exp experience and express um, his image sexually is through bringing together the complement, and that is man and woman. Um, that's not a political statement. Mm -hmm. That isn't me saying I'm jumping on the, the bandwagon. I've, I've, I've lobbied Congress and sat in, in the White House more times than I can count. Um, I don't live my life there. I think that is there is an explanation there of why this is so important. The second thing that I, I look at it, and, that, and that's a good reason, I think mm -hmm. we should talk about those things. Gay and lesbian people should talk about those things. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should debate them um, in angry, divisive um, ways that, that rip um, humanity apart in the ways that we have done mm -hmm. that. I think we should come together and we should talk about it. And I, mm -hmm. there are gay and lesbian people out there who are so thoughtful and so interested in having this conversation. Gay and lesbian people who are standing up fighting for DOMA. Mm -hmm. I mean, ironically, it's right. to paint any community right. with a broad brush is, is unfair. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a conversation that we need to have um, in a very different way than we have had it before. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Um, the, the, the good part of the conversation and the discussion, mm -hmm. but I also think it is a tool of the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, nothing, uh, nothing will divide us more than taking a little bit of truth mm -hmm. and then adding fear to it. And we have responded and reacted and lived in the Christian church for an entire history, mm -hmm. um, motivated most by fear. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think this is such a big deal because we have escalated it to a point where we believe everything is going to be lost over this one issue. Um, it's the Lord of the Rings. You know, and and this, is, this is one of the reasons why I am so incredibly thankful. If I ever doubted my decision mm. to, to close Exodus, and it wasn't just my decision, I don't mm -hmm. wanna ever say that. There were so many of us at the table but it's been a dream of mine for a decade, mm. uh, more than a decade, to close this ministry. But a decade? 12, that's what I was hired on. You know, when I sat down with the hiring committee, they said, what success wow, looked like man. for you? And I said, success looks like Exodus going out of business because the church is doing its job. Now it's Exodus needs to go out of business so the church can do its job. Mm. They're never gonna do the job if, if we don't mm. get out of the way. And I am the church, mm. so uh, I'll stick in there with us, but mm. the church needs to own this. But mm. I've, if for no other reason, Closing Exodus was me um, and, and my um, fellowship mm -hmm. um, holding on to the ring, going 
on this long journey through treacherous circumstances to get to the place where we threw the ring into the fire right. and said, no one deserves this power. Mm. Um, the way the world has reacted um, to Exodus, good, bad, indifferent, um, angry, happy, for whatever reason they're mm. angry, happy, good, bad, whatever, okay. no one deserves this power. Mm. No man, no organization, no group of people. And and I, it's just an extension really of the the anxiety mm -hmm. um, that is going on in our culture today mm -hmm. with regards to homosexuality. And so for us in the church, we have to stop this culture war. Mm -hmm. We have to stop um, beating people. We've got to stop waging war for the sake of an institution called marriage that we have abused far worse than anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we need to, to redefine um, n not marriage, um, but rethink how we engage with culture mm -hmm. on this issue. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we change what we believe, because obviously I haven't. Yeah. Um, but I'm unwilling to, to fight. I'm yeah. unwilling to, to grab my sword um, mm -hmm. and, and use it against people. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather, and I think this is the why, um, why close Exodus, why start something new? Because I have a hope um, that we can do something better. I have a hope that we can sit down across the table like you and I are doing with gay and lesbian people, mm. um, with any people, and say, okay, this is what I believe, and I'm really passionate about what I believe, and this is how it impacts me, and I realize I'm only responsible for me, yeah. but I wanna hear your story, and I wanna find out where we have something in common. Mm. Um, and the things we've argued about in the past, there might be some argument left there, but I think we've argued up here when there's something we can find to shake hands on here. I look at, you know, I've shared this story a, a dozen times or more um, in the last couple of weeks. Um, Richard Stearns, who's the president of World Vision, mm -hmm. uh, is doing something astounding with World Vision in many parts of the world, but in Budapest, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's my favorite thing I think I've ever seen mm -hmm. Christians do, and that is in Bangladesh, they have partnered with the Hindus, the Muslims, the Buddhists um, to open a daycare mm. for the children of women in the sex trade. So they have this building. Mm. It is a full-time daycare, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, Buddhists. Um, they're caring for these children in this building while next door, their moms are prostituting themselves, servicing their clients. They've done this for the sake of the children. Mm. It's amazing. They've, in other parts of the world, these religions are waging war. Throughout history, these religions have waged war. Mm. You know, in America, we're waging a culture war um, with, with these folks. Um, and yet, in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. they've decided, you know what, we have some very real differences, mm. but we care about the children, mm. and we're gonna serve the children. Mm. And I think we can do that. I think that that I don't think that's too difficult in the church. I'm not saying we're ever going to have utopia. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Bible doesn't promise that. Yeah. But I think we can do far better mm -hmm. uh, than than we think we can. Mm -hmm. uh, even far better than we hope we can. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can sit down at the table uh, mm -hmm. with people. We can host conversations mm -hmm. with people, with leaders who bring their minions to the table. Yeah. Uh, I'll bring mine to the table. You bring yours, right. and we'll demonstrate something. Um, that I've not seen in my lifetime in the church. Mm. And that's a conversation that centers around doing something better, mm -hmm. not centers around capitulating um, core values or core mm -hmm. beliefs or compromising what we believe about biblical truth, right. but um, that seeks to build the kingdom in a way. And, and, and even in the church, even with Christians, I mm -hmm. think we can do this. There is a great chasm. We can start in the church because mm -hmm. the world, you know, whatever, but mm -hmm. the the church has a great divide. Mm -hmm. Let's sit down. You know, Gene Robinson, Bishop Gene Robinson, the Episcopal Church was right. among the first to reach out to me and say, mm -hmm. I'll host a conversation in my church. But he doesn't think I believe something other than what I've ever believed, right. okay. but he wants to host a conversation because the common good means we might bring people to Jesus and that might change someone's eternity. And that's more important than me saying, I think you're wrong about this. Mm -hmm.